we'd like to thank you for our guest of the evening tonight, uh, UFC veteran, Mr. Martin Campman. Martin, how you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Ah, uh, we're doing good. Of course, it's Derek here, and then we've got RJ on the line as well. And uh, as I understand it, you're just getting done with some training down there. Where are you at? At the Extreme Couture Gym? Yep, yep. Getting back into training. So you just finished fighting, and you're already back in the gym. Uh, you know, what's up with that? Have you already – I've seen that, you know, Jake Shields, you know, they've been talking – a lot about where he's gone, would have, should have, could have. Uh, what about you? Have Have you already been talked with the matchmakers there at the UFC of your next step? Uh, no, I don't know when my next fight's going to be, but uh, I'd like to fight, you know, uh, not too far away. And, and uh, you know, I'd like to keep keep fighting, getting some tough guys. You know, I thought it was a close fight. You know, I did some stupid mistakes in the fight with Jake Shields. Uh, kind of gave the victory away, so I'm a little bummed out about that. But uh, I'd like to come back soon and, and uh, hopefully fight another uh, one of the top guys in the division. Well, uh, what did you think about the fight? I know you said you made some mistakes. Uh, did you have uh, Shields winning narrowly? Or I know Fight Metrics had it as a draw. What, what did you think about the fight? You know, you know, it depends how you score the, you know, the takedowns or whatever, you know. But he really didn't do anything, you know, once he got me down, you know. The, 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 the times he got me mounted, you know, I, I bucked him off right away, and he, he never really, he never really uh, had the position established too long. You know, he was just kind of, uh, you know, riding riding out the clock whenever he got on top. You know, he didn't really do anything with it. You know, I, I had inflicted no damage, but I know, you know, the judges score uh, score that. You know, but uh, I thought I kind of gave that last round away. You know, I tried to finish the fight. I was going for a choke, and I get, ended up giving up top position. And uh, you know, I should have just stayed on top and and. Uh, and uh, pounded at him and, and, and not try to finish him like I did, but just, uh, you know, be happy to stay on top like he did, you know. So, you know, I think I heard him more, you know, I kind of knocked him down in the second round. So I think uh, I think I gave the away by, fight away by, you know, playing into this game and trying to submit him, you know. I should just be happy to, to stay on top and, and uh, pound on him instead. But it's just my own fault and... Uh, Right. And, and, well, I saw on your uh, Twitter page there, um, of course, it's Martin Campman there, um, where you, you said you might have, uh, you know, missed your weight, um, your calculations on the weight. Did that affect you at all when it came into time to step into the cage when you uh, were cutting the weight? Well, no, the weight, the weight cut was easy, no problem at all. Okay. I mean, maybe I cut a little bit too much weight, but. Uh... So you know, you, you mentioned that you're already uh, back training there. Um, previously, we've heard uh, some back and forth. Um, at one point, Dan Hardy called you out, and then you called Dan Hardy out uh, before the fight. Is that a possible matchup for you? Yeah, definitely. You know, he he, he called me out, but but well, he, I think he called the winner me and Thiago when we fought, and then afterwards, I said, you know, I'd love to fight him, but uh, ended up fighting Condit instead, and uh, I had the opportunity to fight Shields. Uh, so, you know, I'd like to beat up Hardy. Why not? <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, hey, Martin. Martin. No. So, uh, with you know, with with your next step, you know, your training. You said you want to uh, face possibly in the, the beginning of the year. Um, right now, are, are you just uh, looking to just stay in shape? Or are you helping some? You've got a lot of great guys there in camp. A lot of them were fighting around your same time. Uh, do you, are you helping anybody else get ready for any fights? Uh, you know, right now I'm just uh, easing back into training, but you know, I'll, I'll be there to help out Gray if he needs uh, help for his fight. You know, I'm not not really uh, Frankie Edgar size, but uh, you know, I'll be there. <laughs> so, you know, if he needs my help, I'll be there. And um, I don't know who else we have coming up. You know, most of the guys already fought. Right. Uh, uh-huh. And what is your what is your opinion? You know, I know how I saw an interview that you did earlier uh, about how boring basically uh, um, Jake Shields is and how one dimensional he is. A lot of people are throwing a lot of negativity on the Gray Maynard fight, um, and they're worried about laying and praying um, on that end. What are your What are your thoughts? You know, that being a teammate. Well, I think uh, I mean. Um... 
Ray, at least, you know, he got knockout power. He'll he'll try to punch, you know, but uh, um, I think Jake Shields is more boring, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think I think Gray's fights are exciting, but he's a teammate, you know. So 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 I'm kind of biased, you know. When I watch his fight, you know, it's always different when you know the guy. You get mm-hmm. to it. You know, I could see some of his, some of his victories haven't been that exciting, you know. But uh, um, at least he tries he tries to do more. I think. Absolutely. And and his fight with Edgar was actually pretty good, you know. I know he's had a couple of fights lately that wasn't that uh high paced but you know his first fight with Edgar was actually pretty good so hopefully this one's going to be good as well I think I think uh, Gray's going to put it on Edgar like he did the first time alright well definitely looking forward to, to that as well and are you at home in your in your current weight division you know you started you started out a little heavier um, you know are, are you looking to stay where you're at I'd like to get heavier than I am right now I, th- I think I'm still pretty light for 170 Okay. Make the but I can make the weight cut just thinking about losing weight. You know, I, I can <laughs> I can think put on at least ten pounds of muscle and still compete at one seventy. All right. So 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 that's your goal. And and uh, have you positioned oh, maybe one fifty five? I don't know if you have heard RJ. He said, uh, "What about dropping uh, even further to one fifty five if you're still light?" Yeah, but yeah, you know, I think I could maybe it's possible to do a cut, weight cut, but I don't. I think I'd be pretty sucked out and not not a. Uh, I don't think I'd be, have too much energy, you know. But I think it's possible. You know what? Uh, I think uh, Martin's a very uh, he's a very dangerous force at 170. So I think he should uh, continue to uh, explore 170. I'm staying. I'm staying 170. I got no plans of going to 55. If, yeah. you, if you if you make a, if you put enough money in the pot, I'll I'll bet you I can make it. Okay. You can make one fifty five. You're kind of tall, eh? Yeah, but if you put enough money in the pot, I'll make you a bet. That'd be worth my while, though. <laughs> RJ, uh, put, put the money up. I, I want to see him do it. I want to see him, him challenge the best at one fifty five as well. Why the heck not? What are we talking? How much? No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you'd be breaking the HCRMA.com salary right there. So let's, let's not uh, challenge the man. Um, All right, fair enough. <laughs> you know, you know, I know you're training here, so we don't want to keep you up, you know, for very much longer there. Um, but uh, I, I've, I've noticed and run across a couple things about Denmark, and you know, I. I have questions on them, uh, seeing I'm not you know, as cultured as RJ coming from different countries and whatnot, but not the world traveler. It seems that Denmark is the first for everything. You know, the, the Little Mermaid, Legos. W- what is in the water there in Denmark that that y'all are, seem to be the first at everything? I don't know about what else. What else were the first at? I think that's Legos, Little Mermaid. I think that's all we got. I'm not sure about uh, Metallica. I think the lead singer or the founder of Metallica. No, the drummer. We got the drummer, Lazuli. Yeah, the drummer. I, I mean, it's not that big of a country, is it? That that all these uh, great national achievements are just seem to be blossoming. Um. No, I mean there is a small country, we're a small country. We don't we don't uh we don't have that many accomplishments. We have a few though. And and you've got yourself who's who you know, talk about real quick how do you come from Denmark, which I, I saw that you still they're still growing and developing in the MMA uh realm. How did you come to to going into MMA from that small uh fan base? Well, I started I started doing karate actually when I was a kid, and then later I did uh, amateur boxing and amateur Thai boxing. Fought there for a while, then I did uh, a couple of pro Thai boxing fights, and then I did um, while I was while I was training boxing and Thai boxing, I was doing submission wrestling at the same time. So I started competing in amateur MMA and and like submission wrestling competition, nogi, and um, you know I, I had the opportunity to fight amateur MMA with the shooters. MMA, that's and then that's a growing MMA organization, and uh, later professional MMA, you know. So it was just a slow uh, progress, you know. But uh, um, you know, MMA is still growing in Denmark. It's a small sport, but it's getting a lot more exposure, uh, especially now. UFC is starting to get on TV, so that's helping a lot, you know. And uh, we got more gyms, and 
more opportunities to fight and stuff like that. But yeah, I started my career, in, you know, fighting in Denmark and fighting around Europe, you know, England. I had a lot of fights there. I fought in Sweden and fought in Russia and you know, around the place. Right, and and uh, RJ and I were talking last week about promoting and and how UFC promotes. They promote the heck out of Michael Bisping, which has blown up their uh, the MMA scene. Has it been underutilized? You as an international star, you you've had a lot of success uh, there to get it started, maybe propel it even further there in Denmark. Well, I mean, uh, Denmark's a small country, you know, so we don't, you know, we're not that big of a market. So I can see why, you know, they get a piece of the uh, uh, UK better than they want to get a piece of Denmark. But you know, I got a lot of support from from uh, Scandinavia as a whole. You know, I have a lot of uh, support from. Uh, all the Scandinavian countries like uh, Sweden and Norway and Finland. So, uh, you know, I appreciate that, and, and hopefully, you know, we, we, we can have a show in somewhere in one of the Scandinavian countries, you know, uh, and, and I can go there. I'd love to fight there. All right. Well, you know, you, you seem to be on the right path here, whether it be Dan Hardy. I wouldn't mind seeing you uh, tear it up with uh, Jake Shields one more time. You, you know, do you think an immediate rematch would be possible? Because they they haven't solidified his shot at the number one uh, contender slot. Do you think that could be a possibility for you, or do you you know prefer Dan Hardy at this point? Oh, I would definitely most like most. I want to. Pref- I would prefer to get a rematch. That's you know. I would. I would love to get that rematch. You know. I think. Uh, I think it was a close fight, even though you know I did some stupid mistakes. A lot of people thought I won it, so I would very much love to get that rematch anytime. But I mean, UFC don't do too many other rematches, so. You know, I'll fight whoever they match me up with. But, of course, right now, the guy I want to fight the most is Jake Shields. Okay. And, and it's, it, it, you know, it's been the, the year of the rematch, Shogun and uh, Lioto as well. So I think I think it's possible, especially with uh, it'll be a long time for Shields to wait if he has to, uh, if he's given that spot. So I think it would be perfect for you all to go one more time, maybe early uh, 2011. So I, I'm hoping that happens there. Um, I'm really, I'm down for that for sure. Absolutely. Hey, hey Martin. Martin. Let you go. You know. Go ahead, Arthur. Hey, Martin. What does it feel like to uh, submit a guy in front of so many people? It's a great experience, you know. Getting in the cage and getting getting the win is the best experience, you know. Especially when you finish the fight, you know. It's it's a different experience when you finish the fight compared to uh, compared to winning the decision, you know. Um, I I go for the finish, and I think uh, I think pre- people appreciate that, you know, about my my fighting style, you know. I think uh, yeah. some guys, uh, yeah, like my last opponent, just tried to light out the clock a little bit too much and go for the kill. It, it, it seems, I agree. Uh, you, how how bad is this uh, Jake Shields fight eating at you? Did, I mean, were there any sleepless nights after, like literally sleepless nights after the fight? I mean, how how bad has this eaten up at you? Oh, uh, it's 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 it, it's got me pretty good, you know. It's, um, it's but that's how it is. That's the fight game, you know. You gotta we win some, you lose some, you know. It's I'm I'm not you know. I'm I'm not disappointed about the decision. You know that's what happens. You know I'm, I'm most of all I'm disappointed in my, myself. I'm disappointed in my own performance. So, um, you know I did some stupid mistakes. You know I'd love to go that back and 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 and, and redo it, but I can't. You know there's nothing I can do about it. So I just got to move on and 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 hopefully uh, improve in the gym and uh, and uh, come back and 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 win the next fight. So. So you know, of course, it, it, it's, uh, it's I hate losing, you know, but I can't change it now, so I, I just got to move forward. Oh, absolutely. All right, you might you might need to do what uh, Mike, uh, Mayhem Miller did and do a "Don't Be Scared, Homie" website so you can get that rematch. That might be what it might take to to sway the. What I don't know what website that was you're talking about. Was that uh, Mayhem Miller? He he's calling out uh, Nate. Uh, Nick Diaz has, uh, I guess, been ducking him in his opinion. So he he put out the uh, website "Don't Be Scared, Homie," which is his famous catchphrase when he tried to go to uh, KJ Noons into a rematch. So he's doing that to petition, I guess, Scott Coker and the Strike Force to get them to set up that match. So uh, that could be a little bit drastic, but uh, something you 